When you get in a kayak or on a paddleboard, you're quiet and you start to see things. The wildlife comes out. You start to hear things. It's just amazing. And you feel that connection. You feel that connection with all the wildlife and what really makes, I think, Southwest Florida and the Great Calusa Blue Way special. There are not many places that you can find with a large natural area just like this right outside the heart of a downtown city center. And we're very fortunate to have that here in Fort Myers. Do something out of the box. Guarantee you, if you go on a trip with any guide in this local area, they'll take you to something you've never been to. You'll experience something that, you know, you may have only seen on TV or dreamt about, um, but we have it here. seeking adventure, Florida has got you covered. Whether exploring natural springs, swimming with gentle giants, or feeling the rush on the nature coast, the natural beauty and wonder of the Sunshine State is easily accessible and definitely worth a visit. On this episode of Wanderlust Florida, we jet off for the tropical warmth of Fort Myers and take in three nature-inspired experiences in the heart of Southwest Florida. I grew up in Ohio. When I moved here to Fort Myers, this was one of the first places I discovered. And it was just this magical place that I had no idea existed. And so I came back often, and now I'm really lucky that I get to work here and I get to share this place with others. My name is Jason Beckman, and I'm the coordinator here at Six Mile Cypress Slough Preserve. We are here in the heart of Fort Myers in Southwest Florida along the Gulf of Mexico. A slough is a long, narrow, forested wetland with slowly flowing fresh water. The slough is 3,500 acres, uh, north to south. It kind of serves like a bucket. It's a place where a lot of the rain that falls and the runoff from neighborhoods nearby collects, but the water actually moves very slowly, but you have to look at the water very closely to see it. And what's important about the slough is that the aquatic plants here they absorb some of the excess nutrients that is in the water, and this process gradually purifies the water. And then what happens is this water flows into creeks and canals that ultimately reach the Gulf of Mexico. So this is a really important area that has um, a far-reaching impact beyond just the slough because it helps to protect and maintain the health of other natural areas in the region. So here at the slough, it's a wildlife sanctuary for um, endangered and also threatened wildlife species, as well as a lot of other native wildlife for Florida, and this includes the American alligator. We also have river otters. We have many uh, migratory birds that stop over here. It's amazing to be at the slough, especially during the early fall and in the spring for the fall and spring bird migrations. Uh, but there's always so much to see along the boardwalk. You'll never have the same day here at the slough. So the story of how the slough came to be is a really fascinating one. It all started in the mid-1970s when a group of local school children in the area were studying the importance of freshwater wetlands and how many of these places were beginning to disappear. So the students uh, learned that the Six Mile Cypress Slough uh, in their own backyard was under threat for logging and for development. So they came together and launched a campaign to convince local elected officials and the public to purchase the land and protect it. So what happened is they got a ballot referendum um, for folks to vote on. And so 
The citizens agreed to increase their own taxes to be able to raise the money to purchase and protect the slough. And then um, in 1991, the boardwalk opened to the public. And so for more than 30 years now, folks have been able to enjoy the slough from the boardwalk. For me, this is a special place just to relax from the hustle and bustle of our busy lives and really connect with nature and see the wildlife in their native habitat and discover their worlds. It's just a magical feeling to be here. There are not many places that you can find with a large natural area just like this right outside the heart of a downtown city center. And we're very fortunate to have that here in Fort Myers. The morning routine for a captain is, is, pre is pretty special. Not a whole lot of people get to, get to experience that. We're often leaving before the light comes out and we're spending 45 minutes to an hour and a half getting bait prior to a trip and then coming back and picking up our clients. But that first ride out, there's no lights out. It's, you know, the sun's just beginning to creep across the horizon. You know, just an explosion of colors out there while you're the first one of maybe two or three other people out on the flat getting some bait for the morning. It's, it's a serene experience. I don't think enough people have that kind of moment. We all wake up, we crush some food, and we go out on our busy days. But the mornings for us sometimes gives us, you know, gives us a good opportunity to reflect. You're getting ready, you got your gear set up, you, uh, you got your toolbox, so to say, bringing my hooks, bringing my tackle, and what kind of rods I might need. Um, and you're, you're a little anxious in the morning, maybe a little tired, and, and once you get on that boat and you set out for the day, then the excitement rolls in because you know you're about to go out there and catch some fish. You, you might not know exactly what, you know, but but you're gonna go out there, give it your all, throw some bait in the water, and when you when you get on the fish, it's um, it's ecstasy, really. It's just it's the best natural high you can ever get. You're just out here having fun, catching fish, building memories. My name is Mike Zeleny, and I'm a full-time charter captain in Southwest Florida. The beaches down here in Southwest Florida, in particular, Sanibel Island, Captiva, and Cayo Costa, a little bit further north, are super special to us. We've got world-class shelling. Um, Sanibel Island is an east to west oriented island, which is pretty unique, and all the currents from the south bring up a lot of those, those really popular shells. Um, very family-friendly, super fun, super warm. We're all on island time, so to speak. It's, it's kind of a calm, chill atmosphere when you come down here. And there's a, a host of activities to do, mainly going on the beach, getting a nice tan, finding some shells, bringing home some souvenirs, doing some fishing trips, going on the water, going to a restaurant, getting a little bit of a different experience from what you might be used to at home. Um, there's, uh, there's definitely something on the water for you. Fishing's incredible. I think, uh, I think we have a world-class fishery here, and there's always something to do no matter when you come down. You know, we're always at the mercy of the weather, but thankfully down in Florida, we usually have a, have, a, have a pretty good opportunity for some positive weather with a lot of sunshine. As far as being an expert fisherman, it doesn't matter. Most of our clients have never fished before in their whole lives. We, we get everything set up. We get the rods, the gear, the licensing, the tackle. Um, you come out here, we're gonna throw a rod in your hand, that rod's gonna bend and we'll coach you through it and pull that fish up out of the water. When you drop that hook down, you never know, you know what kind of large fish might, might tag into your line. And usually what that feels like is, you feel a little, a little tap and all of a sudden you pull up and it feels like a cinder block. Like, oh well, I caught a rock. Well, then that rock decides to run and burn out 100 yards of line. Uh, that's, that's super fun, super exciting. It you know, gets, you, gets your heart pumping and you know, hopefully at, at the end of that line is, a, is an awesome fish you can either take a picture of or take home and, and have a little bit of dinner. Catching your own fish and eating your own fish is, is definitely an experience that I, I recommend everybody in the world experience at least once. Coming out here and seeing the bait that you use to catch the smaller fish and maybe working your way up the food chain, maybe we use one of those fish you just caught, put it on a bait, 
on, on a hook and catch a bigger fish. Then that bigger fish becomes your dinner. There's something special about that. Going home and eating a fresh fish that you caught that particular day, um, that you know, words can't really describe, you just have to experience it. And I guarantee it'll be the best fish you've ever had. As far as the hook and cook, um, there's a host of restaurants out here you can take your catch to, but I always recommend um, finding a, a host of restaurants that you might be interested in and giving them a quick call, see if, see if they will cook it for you. The kick I get from uh, seeing people catch their first fish or experiencing something new, that is what makes this, uh, makes this a long-lasting career for me. When you, when you can drop a big bait down and you're on the other line is attached a 300 pound grouper bigger than both of us put together uh, there's something about that that you just don't forget you gotta fight that fish they want to pull away you just gotta keep the pressure on them it's a it's a battle of endurance you gotta you gotta make your muscles outlast their muscles what I recommend for folks that are interested in doing something like this um, instead of going online and going to a booking site I highly recommend you call a local marina Google marinas in my area, wherever you're, you're vacationing to, and call them. Ask them for personal recommendations for fishing guide. I think one of the biggest reasons for folks to come down here is the sense of adventure. Do something out of the box. I guarantee you, if you go on a trip with any guide in this local area, they'll take you to something you've never been to. You'll experience something that you, know, you may have only seen on TV or dreamt about, uh, but we have it here. We have paradise. You're gonna be on island time the whole time. Maybe have some cocktails on the boat and just relax, catch some fish, go shelling, bring some souvenirs home with you. Uh, there's a lot of adventure to be had here and all you have to do is ask and make that phone call. When you come down here and you're, you're paddling, as soon as you leave the launch, you start to listen. You can feel now, I can, you can hear the wind, you hear the ospreys. Any stress, everything you have just kind of flows out with you, every stroke you take, and it's just, it's amazing. And then you start to concentrate on the birds and stop worrying about everything else. And you really get immersed in where you are and what you're doing and live in the moment. And that's what I can always count on when I come down here and I paddle is, this is where I am, I'm on the water, and it's where you are, totally. My name's Mike Hammond. I'm the coordinator of the Great Calusa Blue Way Paddling Trail, and it's right here in Southwest Florida in the heart of Fort Myers. The Great Calusa Blue Way is a 190 mile paddling trail. Uh, we have markers out there on the water so paddlers know where they, they're going. We also have maps. We even have an app to help paddlers find their way out there. So that's really what it is officially. When you get out in the water, that's when you really see what the Great Calusa Blue Way is. It's a real connection to nature and the history of Southwest Florida. When you're paddleboarding down here, it's just amazing. You just feel like you're gliding over the water, and I've compared to it to just gliding over a touch tank. There are days I don't know where to even look. The birds are flying above. You see all the stingrays and little sharks swimming underneath you. It's just amazing. So I just, I feel like it's just floating through nature. It's such variation out there when you're paddling. You can be in a nice protected little mangrove trail. You can paddle open water to the barrier islands like Sanibel, Cay Acosta, or you can go up these tiny little jungle-like Florida creeks, which are awesome. And that's part of what makes it so unique is that variation, but it's also the variation of wildlife that's out there. Because we're down in the subtropics, we've got all kinds of animals. They're either heading north or heading south or right on the migration path. And we also have lots of residents that are here just year long, like the manatees and dolphins. It's just awesome. You're kayaking on the Great Calusa Blue Way. It's, it's just a different feeling because you are down, you're low in the water, you're a part of it. You feel the ocean, you feel what it's doing, and you've got to adjust to it. And it's a whole different experience when you're actually in the water. The wind, the water, you're all part of it. And that's what I think really makes kayaking special down here. I think the most interesting thing about the Calusa Blue Way is just the connections it has. Not just, not just all the paddlers, the kayakers, the paddleboarders, 
I think it's the connections with nature, with going out and seeing the dolphins and the manatees, but also the connection to the Calusa, who this trail was named after in the history in all the islands. It just kind of brings this whole history of the paddling culture together down here and all the wildlife. It's my favorite place to be. This is where I bring my family when we have free time. This is where I bring my friends. This is where we come out and we, we just enjoy nature, enjoy each other, and we really get connected with, with everything that's really special about South, Southwest Florida and the Fort Myers area. When you come down to the Calusa Blue Way, there's so many possibilities. You can spend a week going out and camping uh, and be really primitive and be out there in nature. You can stay in a hotel and just come out and take a two hour tour and still see lots of wildlife and lots of fun. Kayaking, paddleboarding, canoeing, any type of paddling you want. There's so many varieties and options down here. Shallow protected water, it's just, it's the perfect spot to come down. I think visitors should come here if they really want to be a part of nature. You're not just watching on TV, you're not, you're not watching from a distance, you're actually part of it, you're immersed in it. When you get in a kayak or on a paddleboard, you're quiet and you start to see things, the wildlife comes out, you start to hear things, it's just amazing and you feel that connection. You feel that connection with all the wildlife and what really makes, I think, Southwest Florida and the Great Calusa Blue Way special. On the next episode of Wanderlust Florida.